a, a brand new album, uh, Death by Rock and Roll, out February 12. And I've got Taylor here from The Pretty Reckless. So good to meet you. How are you? I'm doing well. It's uh, good to talk to you, man. How are you doing? Yeah, doing okay. We got through COVID. We're, we're, we're doing all right over here. And I, and I guess you must be really itching to get out there after sort of so much time off playing live music. It, uh, yeah, <laughs> to yeah. say the least. It's, it's been a minute. Um, it's, it's very bizarre releasing new material and not being able to play it live. It's, I, I don't know really how to put that into words. It's just very strange. Like to have put out a song, Death by Rock and Roll, it went number one in America and we've never ever played it full on electric in a room together in front of an audience ever. And it's That's just insane. strange. Like, we, you know, we've done our like acoustic quarantine from our own houses, you know, that version and stuff, but we've never played it in front of an audience before. And that's just the strangest feeling in the, in the world. So hopefully, hopefully 2021 is uh, going to look up and the world starts to write itself and we can, we can get back to, to doing what we love and cranking amps and rocking and all that yeah, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's your, it's your day job, you know, isn't is it, is it crazy that, um, I mean, you've done acting and, but isn't it crazy? Being a rock star is your day job. And you, you must wake up and go, I can't believe this. Because I don't know it's, how it started, you know. I, I don't. It still kind of blows my mind. First of all, playing music is to the fact that anyone, including myself, <clears throat> can even call that a job is, that's just, that's crazy. That's not a job. Yeah. That's a pleasure. Yeah. That's a gift. Um, touring, and on the other hand, the travel and the lack of sleep and the, you know, all this, all the stuff that comes along with that that you can call a job but playing getting up getting to go on stage every night and play music and crank amps and scream into a microphone that's not a job that's a pleasure that's a gift and who were you listening to when you were coming up through uh, i guess you know doing gossip girl and 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 you know what music was influencing you and your, your crazy teenage years um honestly i listened to a lot of i guess older it's crazy to me if it's older but uh, i grew up on my dad's vinyl collection so i grew up on a lot of classic rock so it's i mean the first band i fell in love with and to this day are still you know my favorite band in the world is the beatles um but from the beatles then it was you know pink floyd and the who and acdc from your neck of the woods and yeah, yeah. Uh, bob dylan and soundgarden and nirvana and uh and Jimi Hendrix and Cream and Clapton and uh, and the list just you know goes on and on and on and I could endlessly name bands but um so I, I grew up listening to a lot of just just the greats and that's kind of what I tend to stick to because once you go great that, I go back that's a really good list um and, and we're, we're all very proud of our Australian you know bands like uh you know yeah ACDC I mean they've just released their latest album and it's holding number one for four weeks over here, which is kind of big for them. And, and is it uh, good? Is it yeah. right to be good? I, I, yeah, I think it's like a record, you know. But so, you know, it kind of feels like rock and roll is kind of coming back a little bit. Um, and I feel like uh, rock and roll never goes away, though. Like rock and roll, it just rock and roll's never gone. It's just resting. It's just it's yeah. just taking a time out, and then it comes back even bigger than better than ever. I feel like you know, music's very cyclical. I feel like. You know, like if you look at this, if you look at history, like the 60s and the 70s, it was a very, you know, especially for rock and roll, but music in general, it was a huge resurgence of, you know, just all these great artists and bands coming out that just took over. And, and then you get to the 80s and rock and roll kind of took a turn where it went into a little bit more of a pop vein where they kind of started to follow the pop. It cared a little bit more about the, the hair and the outfits and the, the image and um, it was a little shallower i guess for lack of a better term and yeah. then the 90s came in and took over with like you know just throw your head back of i have so much passion and something so important to say that you, it's undeniable and now we're in the 2000s pop again and, and i'm kind of rambling but i feel like we've, we're kind of in that <laughs> resting period again right now yeah. and, and rock is just waiting for that resurgence and and i think that we're with everything that we're living through as 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 a human race right now in the world like we're very much in a in a resurgence and in a, in a renaissance period and i think it's the perfect time for rock and roll to, to come back in a huge way yeah it gives me a bit of hope when uh, a lot of uh people's sort of daughters uh are discovering queen and david bowie and and yeah. uh you know there's the influence of billy eilish as well he's got a bit of a sort of a rock alternative edge and so you're right 
you know, it, 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 it is going back through a little, little sleep. It'll resurge uh, again, maybe in the next couple of years. Hopefully, I feel yeah. like we're living in the new, the new 60s. 20, yeah, yeah, we are. It's the new 60s. Like, I'm cool with that. Let's, let's you know, let's get to the 70s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. So you, you've, I can't believe you guys have been together for 12 years now. Because I, I almost saw you in Vegas. I couldn't get a ticket. I think you were playing... Uh, the Hard Rock. Um, I was there. I think, I think this might have been ten years ago now, and and I was in town just just on holidays, you know. And we supported Guns and Roses from memory. I think it might have been yeah, yeah. on the residency. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, not the residency. Yeah. Maybe. It was. Oh god, maybe it was. Um, but no, we definitely we played Guns and Roses. Um, that had to have been. That was on the first album cycle. So yeah, that had to have yeah. been ten years ago at this point. Crazy. Um. Great. I mean, I, Axel just, I mean, man, getting to watch him sing every night was just phenomenal. Like yeah. the guy, the guy doesn't stop. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And we were actually, we were actually supposed to go back out 2020 kind of, you know, killed it for everyone. We had mm. some really good touring lined up and we we're actually Guns N' Roses was one of the bands we were supposed to go back out with again. Um, and I was very much looking forward to that. Um, hopefully, None of this is actually canceled, and it's, everything's just getting postponed. That's yeah, you know, yeah. Across. Um, but yeah, no, any, you know. Anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. Guns <laughs> yeah, <are> awesome. Okay. <laughs> but but you're certainly sitting next to you know side of stage watching a band and watching that machine go, and it, it would be really interesting and a good sort of I guess rock and roll lesson. Uh, um, watching Guns and Roses do the thing, and of course with um, Soundgarden as well, because you were on their last tour um, back in what, 2017 or whatever. Um, and you, you had a connection with the, the band, obviously. You were touring with them and, and deeply affected by the loss of Chris. And, and um, um, how did it affect you when you got the news? It, it, it would have been hard. Um, hard is an understatement. Uh, I was... I still don't... It's, I don't want to get too heavy here because... Yeah, it's yeah, it's fun. Fun, <laughs> yeah. but um, it, was, it was devastating, to say the least. It was, it was shocking and unexpected and... and crushed me in, in a way that words can't properly express um took me it was the, was the start of me going into a very dark space um which was that i don't know how to not get heavy there's no way to not yeah. get heavy and the album's called death by rock and roll and it's so revolved around because right after we lost chris we I, I we lost our producer and my, my very my best friend in the world kato on due to a motorcycle accident and um so we kind of the pretty records took a lot of hits kind of one after the other there um and this record i think and i went very very down because of that into into this kind of hole of of depression and substance abuse and darkness and it was it was not good um but basically to make a very long story short it was it was music and rock and roll that pulled me out of that and the making of this album really feels like I feel like I wouldn't be here without this record. So this, this album really feels like a rebirth for the band in, in so many ways that uh, I don't even know where to begin, but is even though it's titled death by rock and roll, death by rock and roll itself is very much a battle cry for life. Um, you know? Oh yeah. It's almost a life goal in a way when you hear the lyrics. Like yeah, it, it is. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, live life your own way, go out your own way. Don't let anyone yeah. tell you can only rock and roll till I die. And it was actually a line that Cato used to say all the time. It was kind of a, it was an ethic and like a motto that we, we lived by um, and I still live by. And so when he passed that, that became very relevant again. And, and I think this is probably the first album that was titled before there were songs. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's, I'm just, I'm very excited that it's coming out and everyone's going to get to hear it. But um, no, a lot of, I don't even, everything I am was poured into this album and it, and it very much feels, feels like the first record in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, which I think is, is something that, you know, a lot of bands don't get to experience because, because we lost so much, we had no choice but to completely start from the beginning again. Um, and by doing so, it very much feels like a rebirth, which is, you know, I guess a, a blessing and a curse. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's good to be able to sort of come back from um, so many setbacks and do a reset. And, uh, and look, you, it's your fifth album. You know, it's, it's incredible. Well, fourth. Fourth, your fourth album. That's still incredible. <laughs> oh, wait, you can plug it. No, fourth album, but yeah. uh, we, we, there's an EP in there, so we can count yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll count that. <laughs> we'll count that. Um, but um, look, we, we can't wait to hear more of the album. Uh, 
25 is an incredible track, by the way. That, that, that's, that, that's out now. That's a, a real highlight. And I think we're all kind of excited for next year and uh, hopefully we can slot you in uh, and maybe get around the 14-day hotel quarantine <laughs> somehow. Sounds good to me. I'm, well, I, I mean, as long as, as long as we're all safe, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Well, well, Taylor from The Pretty Reckless. Uh, Death by Rock and Roll is out. Feb 12, uh, have a great Christmas and uh, be safe over there and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful holiday, man. Stay safe. Thank you.